It's getting really bright right now. I personally have seen things that I can't explain. I saw a metallic craft with like five bright lights coming out from the bottom of it. All of a sudden a light came down from above, right above the pool. Oh, this whole valley has been the scene of some of the most intense UFO activity of, of anywhere in the world. And he said, we want you to come with us. And I said, no. He just took me up anyway. Aliens are here, period. My name is Alex Mistretta, and I am the alien hunter. Alex Mistretta is dying to see a UFO. In his 20 years as a UFO investigator, he's never seen one. Mistretta is research head for the Los Angeles chapter of MUFON, the world's largest UFO investigative network. He's traveling from LA to Sedona, Arizona, a hotbed of UFO activity and where he figures will be his best chance to finally encounter a UFO. Um, the reason I wanted to come out here is, well, first of all, there's, there's very few areas in the world where you have such a high concentration of UFO sightings, and Sedona is one of them. It's like I'm compelled. It's almost like I don't have a choice, you know, but do this. For most of his life, Mistretta has been interested in UFO phenomena. I had a sighting with my mother when I was 10 years old. It was around midnight. We were just by the pool. All of a sudden a light came down from above, right above the pool. The light filled pretty much the entire pool. It was roughly 10 to 20 feet above our heads. It stayed there for about, I would say, at least, you know, 20 to 30 seconds. And then it just was gone. And you know, after you've experienced something like that, you're kind of hooked. But it was a particularly unusual photograph taken in this desert that got Mistretta fascinated with Sedona. This woman took a picture and it showed kind of like a, it looked like a television screen above the desert. And inside you could see it had a, a UFO in there. Sure, when the picture came out, you could see this big portal and you could even see a little person or whatever it was in, a, I think, his left-hand corner. Sedona is a unique, unusual town. An eclectic mix of New Age spiritualists and down-to-earth healers are blended into a melting pot, with others attracted by the magnetic geological formations and extraordinary UFO and paranormal activity here. Many people believe this desert holds the highest concentration of mystical energy on the planet. This energy exists as an invisible pattern of straight lines called ley lines. Power centers or vortexes are created when the lines intersect, opening a porthole into other dimensions. I think Sedona is simply more powerful energy-wise because it has four major vortexes in very close proximity. Um, and a vortex is basically an energy spot. The energy is either spiraling out of the Earth uh, into the universe or from space into the Earth. I've been here for 20 years, and uh, to me the whole area is a very special, special place. The, all of these ley lines, he used to work with the ley lines, and it says where two of them crisscross, uh, it creates like a doorway, and uh, different beings from different dimensions can come through or they can see through, it's like a mirror. These powerful sights seem to emit a strange healing energy. I've seen incredible physical healings happen. I mean, anybody in town can tell you stories about uh, people that have come here with cancer 
uh, you know, with different different things that were wrong with them. And the next thing you know, two weeks later, you're getting a letter from them saying, uh, I went back home and there's nothing wrong with me now. Beyond their apparent healing power, these vortexes, nestled within ancient rock spires, seem like transmitters, acting as beacons for intergalactic travelers. Here, there are more UFOs and strange lights spotted in the sky than anywhere else in the world. I personally have seen things that I can't explain. I've seen lights, I've seen objects. There were these lights, and everybody said, oh, look at those lights, so I grabbed my dad's army binoculars, and I looked at these lights and I saw a metallic craft with like five bright lights coming out from the bottom of it. There was this little blue light in the sky. And uh, we, as we low watched it, it went like this. And uh, there were these two, they looked like little flies, and they, but they were all lit up and they went over and they started going around it. And next thing you knew, it went like this. And, they went up again, and it went over like this, and they went around. And by that time, we were talking, and we knew that those were jets that were following it. And all of a sudden, it just went, and it disappeared. With all this strange activity, it's no wonder the Red Planet Diner is one of the more popular hangouts in town. It is also a perfect home base for UFO researcher Alex Mistretta, who is hoping to confirm his lifelong belief. The phenomenon is really hard to study because you have a sighting here and then it's gone. And then, you know, you, you might not have another one in that area for 10, 20 years or whatever, you know? This place has it all, all the time. But even if people around here are seeing UFOs, will Mistretta see one for himself? Over the next week, he's betting on it. Investigator Alex Mistretta is desperate to encounter an alien spacecraft. So he's teaming up with local researcher and world UFO expert, Tom Dongo. They set up base camp just outside Sedona in the middle of some of the most powerful rock formations on Earth. It hasn't rained in this mystical Arizona desert for nearly four months. And it's in this dry, parched landscape that Alex is hoping to come face to face with extraterrestrial life. The uh, spot we're standing on has seen some of the most uh, intense UFO activity of any single area in the world. Over the past two decades, Tom Dongo has accumulated one of the largest collections of UFO photographs anywhere, most of them taken right here and on a nearby ranch of his colleague and friend, Linda Bradshaw. When did you take this? That was taken about uh, 14 years ago. Really? These, these are UFOs taking off from the ground. They're coming up out of the trees and taking off from the ground. And it's a time exposure shot. It's okay. about a, uh, about a oh, three minute time exposure. Many of the alien spacecraft and extraterrestrial beings Dongo has photographed weren't visible to his eyes. This is one of my favorites. Uh, this was taken on the Bradshaw Ranch about 1994, I believe. Okay. And uh, again, we, uh, we would walk around at night and just and take, simply take uh, flash shots with 35 millimeter cameras. And there were six people in the group that night. Here is a, a, a being that's uh, holding something in its hands. Uh, and it, it has ears like Spock on Star Trek, glowing orange eyes, a very, very long face, uh, and, some, and, and white clothing. And the first thing we did when this, uh, we developed this photograph the next day, the first thing we did was check everybody's clothes right. yeah. that was there the night before, and nobody was dressed like that. So it was a being that, or a creature that was invisible to the eye, but the camera picked it up. The human eye has a, has a, has a range 
uh, a narrow range of, of, of vision. It can pick up objects. But a camera, a 35 millimeter camera, has about 80% more range that it can mm -hmm. see things, you know, that, so uh, things ob ob often will show up in film that the, that the uh, physical eye can't see. Dongo's extraordinary collection contains unique images that few people in the world have captured. He claims to have taken many of these photos by simply pointing and shooting into the darkness of the desert. Why do you think this area is at such a high level of sighting? Well, you know, the magic of this place is its remoteness and it's probably one of the most beautiful spots on the planet. I think that's the main thing is the remoteness. And for some reason, there's a lot more, the UFO activity has always been consistent out here in the canyon lands. And where is the U.S. government in all this? With so many reported UFO sightings around Sedona, the American authorities seem noticeably quiet. Researcher Tom Dongo thinks the government has a secret agenda of its own. It is common knowledge in U.S. intelligence uh, circles that uh, the U.S. government has been directly dealing with aliens since 1943 and possibly back into the 30s. Well, you know, I, I think the reason the government why the, re the government doesn't want the information released about what it has on UFOs and aliens because the public would realize there's a, a power far greater than the government and the government would basically be powerless. They'd lose their control over the people. On many occasions, Dongo has witnessed interaction between U.S. military and UFOs. Between 1988 and 1997, the military ac activity out here was constant. And the jet fighter activity out here every night. And uh, the, uh, in, each, in each one of these canyons, uh, there have been gunpoint incidents. Uh, people, hikers would run into uh, military types of machine guns. And they, they were all American military uniforms. I checked with high-ranking uh, yeah. American military people, and I described the uniforms. They said, yeah, those are, those are current uniforms, but there were never any insignias on them. So there has to be some sort of an installation back there somewhere. Yeah, about 10 years ago, there were 12 people standing on this, uh, this very hilltop right here. And uh, they, uh, they, uh, they heard the sounds of a jet fighter. And the, the you, it's, jet fighters are unmistakable because of the roar they make, you know. Yeah. So a fighter came across the ridge over there and down almost treetop level in the valley. And that used to happen here a lot. And a UFO, it was a white sphere of light about 25 feet across, came from the other direction. Now keep in mind, 12 people saw this. And uh, as the fighter and the, uh, the sphere of light got closer, it was kind of like a, a, the UFO was playing a game of chicken with a fighter. Just as they were about to hit, the, uh, the UFO jumped out of the way. So the, uh, the fighter pilot must have had quite a, quite, a, quite a fun ride there. As one of the world's most noted UFO researchers, Dongo has accumulated more than just incredible photos and extraordinary stories. He also says he's experienced hundreds of UFO sightings and has had numerous encounters with alien life forms. Investigator Alex Mistretta is keen to see where some of these supposed bizarre events have occurred. I was actually up on this, uh, this hill one night, coming back from the Bradshaw Ranch, and uh, driving down the road, in the distance uh, there was a white light that was pacing my, my truck in the trees. It was uh, a disc-shaped craft about 50 feet across. It had multicolored lights flashing all around the base of it. I, I was so tired that night. In, in my mind, I said, I said, you know, I'm really not in the mood for this kind of crap tonight. The second that, I, uh, that thought appeared in my mind, the craft stopped in the air, hung there for a few seconds, and then in an instant was gone over the horizon. So whoever they were, they were hearing my thoughts. From what Tom Dongo and many others claim to have witnessed, this supercharged desert seems to attract an enormous variety of alien life forms, sometimes appearing as bright balls of energy known as orbs. One example, some incredible chrome lights Dongo and others say they recently spotted in the skies overhead. 
Uh, they, they flew in tandem over the mountains in, perf in perfect formation and stopped uh, in front of me. But if you can visualize chrome light, and these were about 50 feet across, it was just an absolutely indescribable experience. Throughout Mistretta's week-long investigation, he and Dongo will frequent this hot spot on the hunt for UFOs and aliens. The strong paranormal activity in Sedona has allowed residents to pioneer many techniques now used around the world, including orb photography. Orbs have long been associated with paranormal activity and may help Alex in his quest to understand this powerful location. Here you have, uh, I think there's seven, seven faces descending and uh, three of them are male. And you can see clearly some, a few of them here and uh, I believe three of them are, are female, clearly female. Very, very unusual, very strange. In fact, this is the only photograph like this in the world that I know of. I've never seen another one or, or heard of, of another one like it. It's the kind of evidence that has brought Alex Mistretta here, convincing this UFO researcher that maybe this time he will finally investigate a sighting of his own. UFO researcher Alex Mastretta continues his investigation of Sedona's mystical desert. While his colleague Tom Dongo sets up their base camp, Alex checks out some residents who claim to have had face-to-face -face contact with aliens. However, few can match the story this woman tells. Barbara Snowberger is a homemaker who believes she's been abducted by aliens on numerous occasions. Between the time of three and a half and the time I started to school, I would guess probably 25 to 30 times. Really? Now, I don't have a lot of memories of what happened when I was on board the ship, but I remember the ship. And I remember not being frightened at all, and I remember uh, being excited because I knew they were coming. Snowberger has lived a fairly ordinary life. But if her alien abduction stories are true, it would be an extraordinary phenomenon that Mistretta thinks would be worth investigating. To get to the bottom of this, Mistretta wants Snowberger hypnotized so she can describe her experience in detail. He's called in professional hypnotherapist James Ramey, clairvoyant Madison Morgan, who has debunked other alien abduction claims, and renowned sketch artist Leslie DeMille, who is ready to draw any images that may emerge from this unusual experiment. We're about to have an abductee put under by a reputable professional hypnotist. And what's exciting and unusual is we're gonna have a professional sketch artist here. In real time, he's gonna be able to draw what she describes. Now what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna say the word hold, then I'm gonna bring it down this fashion. You must resist with all that you've got. For example, hold. You weren't very successful, were you? No. Okay. Dr. James Ramey is known as an ultra-depth therapist. His methods go beyond traditional hypnosis. Oh. Ramey has mastered a technique of breaking down the walls to the subconscious mind. Through a long series of exercises and questions, the subject is slowly put into a deeply relaxed state. Eventually, this allows him to psychically tie himself to his subject and to determine if she's had an abduction experience. All right, what I've ascertained from this so far is, yes, she's had experiences um, in this lifetime and in others. So we can go to the next step from here. I'm now going to count from one. As Ramey works through several levels of hypnosis, he pushes Barbara Snowberger further and further from her conscious mind. And as your body has relaxed, your mind has relaxed. This way we have the conscious mind out of the way from interfering. We can also prevent this way any 
uh, erroneous memories that have been installed either through television, uh, the movies, uh, what people read, said. We can eliminate this process, you know, all, all this interference. In a few moments, I'm going to have you open your eyes. I will have you count from one to ten. And you will find that the number between seven and nine is gone. Completely gone. It just does not exist. So now I'm going to have you open your eyes on the count of three. So one, two, three. Eyes open. Do me a favor. Count from one to ten very quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Close your eyes. Let your body relax. Just sinking down. Of course, now the conscious is no has no awareness. Right. Loses awareness completely. And if you and if the subconscious will cooperate, the information coming out is factual. Ramey now takes Barbara Snowberger back to a time when she was a child and to the numerous occasions she claims to have been abducted by aliens. What do you see? What do you feel? What are you experiencing? I think they're looking for me. I can see through them. That's not normal. They... They have faces, they have arms, they have feet, they have something long, like a long cape, but it's, it's not really a cape but I can always see through them. You say they have faces. Describe face. Very strange eyes. They're sunken in. And they have ridges where their eyebrows should be. And they have here, it's all sunk in, right here. In order for those observing to question Snowberger, hypnotherapist Ramey brings his subject out of her deep hypnosis to a semi-conscious state. Their eyes were, were different, huh? Hollow? Not hollow, just sunken in. Um. For Leslie DeMille, who is used to drawing portraits of presidents and other celebrities, this is a rare and unique opportunity. And, and did they have hair? No. They pulled like a skull. Yeah. yeah. What about the environment where they were? Was, it, was there any kind of a... We were in a room I could see radios or dials. But I could see through that too. They were standing in front of me and I think I was sitting cross-legged on whatever it was because I could see out of it. I could see through it. Through what you were Through what I was sitting on. And the, so they, they were white. Yeah, kind of a, a milky white. Uh -huh. But their clothing, the clothing too was probably white. Everything, everything. It was kind of ghostly. Yeah. And were there anybody else in the room with you, any humans? No, there were three of them and one of me. Maybe she saw it, maybe, you know, maybe it's something that she, I don't know, I, that's the unknown. <laughs> She may have, and I truly believe she, she did have an experience or experiences. But clairvoyant Madison Morgan doesn't buy it. I didn't feel that she had this experience. I, I have a feeling she believes she did, but I don't believe that it actually happened. Still, alien researcher Alex Mastretta believes Snowberger's account 
and thinks the sketch may reveal some valuable information. The sketch was a great idea, and I'm actually pretty excited to see how that turns out. Whether Barbara Snowberger was abducted or not, she's able to clearly describe the details of what she believes happened. If it's true, who are these alien beings, and what do they look like? For the first time, a sketch artist will answer these burning questions by interpreting the descriptions given by an alleged abductee under hypnosis. There's three ghost-like figures, unearthly-like figures, and uh, she confronted with them, and uh, so I'm doing the sketch in that manner with these three figures, trying to show them as transparent figures and showing her as a real child sitting. After a few hours working in his studio, artist Leslie DeMille has sketched what Barbara Snowberger claims to have seen in her alleged encounter with alien beings. Providing a sketch while the witness is under hypnosis is an important step in Alex's investigation. But Mistretta wants more than a sketch. He wants to encounter these beings face to face. And he's determined to make that happen. UFO hunter Alex Mistretta has one goal, to see a UFO with his own eyes and investigate it. He believes his best chance to do this is in this hot, dry desert around Sedona, Arizona, where it has not rained for over four months. The thing I probably like best about, you know, being an alien hunter and UFO hunter, it's just being out in the field. I, I like going out on expeditions type of research, you know, I mean, and that's why I'm in it, you know? Like going out there and trying to find things, something new, it's gonna be interesting. But mostly it has to do with just the, just the quantity of sightings. Some think intergalactic travelers are drawn to this mystical place because of the numerous ley lines that crisscross, creating powerful vortexes. Mistretta thinks the vortexes may be where interdimensional beings and alien life forms congregate. Finding where these energy points converge could be a key to spotting a UFO. So Mistretta calls on local experts, Bill Hassel and Tammy Pennington, to help him find a hotspot. special place because there are vortexes here and uh, there's a lot of UFO activity which centers around Bell, Bell Rock. The vortexes are, there. there is a lot of uh, paranormal things coming in and out of it because of the energy frequency. It's almost like a landing pad for other dimensions to come in and out of. Well that, that's a circular area. Right. Here, so. This yeah. is a circular area that's making it come back vortex. around. Yes. So that there could be a lot of small vortexes around. It's not, not just one giant one. Yes, yes, yes. So this is all just, it's mapping out this area for us. This is it, this is one, right here. And at, at some point, if you cross a, uh, hmm. a geopathic uh, line or mm -hmm. vortex line, then the uh, rods will cross like that. What is important here is we had both of them had independently found the same area where there seems to be a vortex. But as soon as you have a second person that finds the exact same occurrence, then it, you know, it becomes pretty exciting because you have evidence of a correlation. So it's kind of the same rule. 
in, you know, UFO research or any paranormal research, really. We want to show you as much proof as many times as possible. Now that he knows where one of the vortexes lies, Mistretta will monitor this spot throughout the week. He'll also rely on the experience of several local residents who have seen their fair share of UFOs. I came home from work after midnight and these, uh, this triangle ship, I saw uh, something rise up. It looked like three stars, but they rose up perfectly uh, together at the same time and it just went, just disappeared. That was one of uh, my sightings. So we were driving on, on the uh, freeway to get over there. I looked over out his window. There were like three perfectly shaped orbs in the sky. It looked like they were traveling with us. Some local residents, like Eli Tyler and Melva Callagher, have expertise in using vortexes to attract UFOs and interdimensional beings. They take Mistretta to an apparent energy spot on a nearby property belonging to Mason Rumney. Here, beside this ancient rock wedged into the bone-dry earth, Rumney has carved out a spiral. The significance of the rock is that it seems to be connected with some, it's been around a long time. It's a chunk of rock. And whether it was part of a carving or even a temple or a, 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 a structure, a monolithic type structure, it has the connection with the earth still. And by going and standing on the rock or sitting on the rock, you allow that sixth sense, say, to relax and come forward. The spiral is designed so that when people walk in, they start focusing. And at that point, your, your attention is focused there subconsciously as well as consciously. On this spot, the group sets up a three-dimensional structure designed by Sedona resident Eli Tyler. Eli has used this structure successfully in the past to create a doorway between dimensions. It's based on a star tetrahedron, which is uh, basically a three-dimensional star of David. It's also called a Merkaba. And uh, I, with the vortexes that are already here, we're going to set up a seven-foot uh, copper Merkaba that we can actually go inside of that should connect us with extraterrestrials because it connects the third with the fourth, fifth, and higher dimensions where extraterrestrials live. So hopefully we'll have some contact. I put a crystal at the top, one at the bottom, and then one at each of the corners. We kind of go up okay. and down. So. Uh, these are just regular quartz crystals. This really does help amplify the uh, Merkaba. This won't work as quite as well. The group will leave the structure sitting here for a few hours, hoping the crystals attached to it will serve as a medium for some extraordinary activity. In the meantime, for Mistretta, there are plenty of other unusual reports to investigate in Sedona, like Chet Snow's recent sighting in his backyard. We came out, my wife and I, and we were asking, are they real? Show us a sign. And it was right then, right above our heads, above these electrical lines, above these trees. On this side? Yes, that we saw the shooting star literally go up in the air instead of coming down as the shooting star normally would. And it lasted, as I say, about 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds at that point. So a very brilliant light, and it went up and vanished on us. Snow also discovered something strange on a photograph he took of his wife and a friend beside his house. The one picture was taken just um, very normally. It's absolutely, completely normal. And the second picture, suddenly, you have this unbelievable pink, vibrating, rotating uh, vortex of energy, okay. actually, which so, is invisible to the naked eye, by the way. So you have, when you took the picture, you had no idea this was there? Absolutely not. I was simply taking two different pictures, one right after the other. Sedona resident Nancy McKinney has also taken numerous photographs of mysterious lights. Sometimes she can see them with her eyes, and other times they show up only on the film. A lot of times when I've seen these lights, I'm just looking at the sky and the light just pops in. It just pops into the sky. And sometimes it'll be stationary, and then it may slowly move either east or west. In the photographs, it's not always a ball of light. This light takes different shapes in the photograph. And sometimes, in some of the photographs, there are dark areas in the center, almost as if those are windows or something like that. Yeah, 
chance to see to check out. Yes, I'll have to check it out and see what we've gotten back. All right, well, everything's still here. It's back to the Merkaba structure yeah, Mastretta helped build earlier. The group hopes their efforts have opened an interdimensional window. Taking turns holding the crystal that's been placed on top, psychic Madison Morgan seems to get the clearest message of all. There may be something happening really unique tonight, and they're saying something around 755. It's like a, a white bluish. What is the white bluish they're showing? Okay. That, there will be something they want to show at 7.55. Wow. This will be white bluish. It's a white. Bluish. Most here are convinced that something will appear tonight at 7.55 p.m. Mistretta, however, is far less certain. Well, the problem I have with this sort of um, channeling is that anyone can sit down and claim to have some kind of communication or really believe that they're having some kind of communication and there's no way to really know. And I don't want to take anything away from these people. I think, you know, they believe it and it might be genuine, I don't know. But for me personally, I can't really take that step. I need a little bit more proof. Still, Mistretta hopes the predictions are true and that the evening will bring his first UFO sighting as a researcher. Back at the base camp set up by UFO expert Tom Dongo, researcher Alex Mastretta is hoping for something unusual at 7.55 tonight. The prediction was made by a local psychic who claims to have received this message from beings in another dimension. Mastretta just wants to see a UFO for himself, to uncover some proof that we are not alone, and to validate his childhood experience. It's why he's traveled from Los Angeles to the depths of the Arizona desert. Here, enormous amounts of extraterrestrial activity are reported all the time. Most of the UFO activity in this area happens right over here, probably 95% for some reason. It's just in this area here. It's no coincidence that this powerful area is near the vortex the dowsers located earlier that day. The two investigators gather their equipment with the hopes of encountering UFO activity similar to what numerous witnesses have experienced on this very spot just outside Sedona. And as 7.55 p.m. approaches, Mistretta and Dongo have their eyes fixed on the skies. But it's not a UFO that appears. It's something else of great significance that will help this dark, dry landscape. At 7.55 p.m., it begins to rain, something that hasn't happened here for over four months. At the time, I didn't really, you know, pay much attention because a lot of things were being said that I didn't really believe in. But at 7.55, sure enough, it started raining and hailing. And apparently, from what I was told, it hadn't rained in here in something like 139 days or so. And I really didn't really think about it right then, but. Uh, around dinner time, I kind of realized, yeah, it started at 7.55 pretty much on the dot. Alex is surprised by the exactness of the prediction. As the rain subsides, they once again turn their eyes upward. So at one time, you know, there was, there was quite a bit of, hey, look at that light back there. That's, that's kind of, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. That could be... Uh... Suddenly, something strange appears in the sky. It's not a plane, I don't think. Well, if it's a plane, you'll see the strobe light, but that's what they look, that's what the UFOs look like when they first come on. Alien hunter Alex Mastretta has come to the Sedona Desert hoping to capture an actual UFO on film. He has set up camp with legendary UFO researcher Tom Dongo. 
and they feel an actual unidentified flying object might be right before their eyes. Quickly grabbing their night vision equipment, the investigation hits full speed. It's why Mistretta has made this trip. His bet is paying off. Perhaps there really is a mysterious attraction to this highly charged desert that's luring so many UFOs. It's the moment Alex Mistretta has been waiting for. It's definitely up in the air. It's completely stationary. OK, now we have the top strobing one. It's approaching the bottom one. That is pretty weird. One is strobing, one is not strobing. Yeah, the bottom one's staying steady, it's not moving. As research head of the Los Angeles chapter of the world's largest UFO investigative network, this is the reason Mistretta made this trip into the Arizona desert. The other one just went over. The strobing one just went over the sta stationary one slowly. Now it's slowing down. With all those reports of UFO sightings from around here, his hunch was right. No strobe. The two investigators are convinced that whatever they are looking at is not an airplane. There's a third one. The third one is still completely stationary. Yeah, the they know an airplane would always have strobe lights on the bottom for safety and travel in a straight line across the sky. These objects are definitely not doing that. There's one still just sitting there, and it's not, there's no strobes on it. Yeah, it's not moving at all. Not moving at all, no. So we know it's not a plane. <laughs> this is what has made this desert around Sedona famous. All three objects seem to be about pretty similar, but the strobing ones are really slow. They're moving back and forth a little bit, which, you know, planes usually can't do. And now, UFO researcher Alex Mistretta is experiencing the phenomena of this mysterious desert for the first time. It's getting really bright right now. It almost looks like it's almost looked like it's green in the middle. It's completely stationary. Has not moved at all. It's gone any higher. Hasn't gone any further away. The shape seems to change a little bit, though. It becomes like a complete ball of light, and then it seems to expand out just yeah, see slightly. Expand and yeah, which is usually a pretty good sign for something anomalous. All the other ones are gone by this time. By this point, though, we've only got one left. Pretty strange. Mastretta is pumped. His dream of investigating his own UFO sighting has actually come true. OK, what's going on right now is we have a light in the sky. Um, I, I'm, I can't tell you how far off the ground it is, but it's been stationary for about, what, 15 minutes now. It's in this powerful Arizona desert where Mastretta has finally achieved his life's goal. It's definitely not, you know, anything usual. It's not a helicopter, it's not a plane. And the strange part is not the fact that it's so much stationary, is that it seems to contract, gets bigger. Big. Now it's getting huge right now, you could even see it with the naked eye. That might be the same object. Yeah, it's getting very, very bright right now. The mysterious and captivating light eventually fades from the eerie skies over this strange desert. Alex Mastretta's Sedona investigation is nearing completion. And with the help of Tom Dongo and others, the UFO researcher from LA will return home convinced we are not alone. I've been doing this kind of research now for 20 years. And there isn't any, any question in my mind that aliens, are, that aliens are here, period. You know, estimates are that there are probably around 16 different races of aliens here. Because I, I have seen now literally hundreds of UFOs, and I've seen about six actual extraterrestrial spacecraft. If I could project on a screen from my mind the things that I've seen with my own eyes, this, this world will be, would be changed overnight. I, don't, I have no doubt that, uh, of the reality of, of uh, extraterrestrials and other beings that are here living in this dimension or on this planet that we can't see, but they're here with us.